Hey everyone, welcome back to Beats Garage. Let's continue assembling this 289 Studebaker engine. Alright, now it always pays to check and double check when you're putting an engine together. And one thing I noticed was, now when I set the end play and I thought that it was fine, when I turned it over and I started working with this crankshaft, I noticed that this crankshaft moves a lot. Now, this crankshaft is all the way forward. And if I put a straight edge on here, I'll do it this way. You can see that the crankshaft is all the way forward. The front of the crankshaft here is flush with the front of my thrust bearing. So I said, well, how far back does it move? Now watch this. That moves like, uh, that's like at least 40 thousandths, 35, 40 thousandths, which made me start to wonder, how much is a crank supposed to move? Which is a lot. And I said, well, what would stop that from moving? What stops it from moving is the thrust plate. This thrust plate, this goes, these oil grooves go toward the engine. This thrust plate goes on here. Then the big gear goes on here and the bolt and holds it all together. This thrust plate has to be pushed off the front of the crankshaft, six thousandths of an inch. Remember the, the uh, end crankshaft end plate is three to six thousandths. So if you push this, take this and push this off the front of the crankshaft, the, this determines your, your end plate. So I do have to use the, the shim, the six thousand shim that came on the engine when I took it apart. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the key in. The key goes in the slot here. And to make it easy on yourself, before you put your key in, depending how you took it out, you want to make sure it's not damaged, just run your key right through the part to make sure that there aren't any sticky spots. And it works nice and smooth. The reason you do that is because you don't want to put it on there and end up swaging or ruining your, your um, key. The key is fairly soft. So now I'm going to put my key in here, get it roughly about center, and be careful. I'm going to tap this down with a hammer. Be careful not to hit that, this, this, this uh, bearing because, or that little shim there, because that shim, the stainless steel, it'll, it'll, it'll uh, bend pretty easy. So I'm just going to tap that down lightly. And now I can take my thrust plate with the oil grooves facing the engine, put it on over, over the key. And it's not down all the way, so I gotta hit it down more. There. And now I can just, just gently tap it on. Okay, so now that's sitting on there. My thrust plate is six thousandths off the front of the uh, thrust. So now when I move this back and forth, it'll only move six thousandths. Yeah, okay, so now that's what holds it there. Now I can start to put the gear on. The gear goes on next. Now there's a couple ways to put this gear on. Um, first of all, make sure you have it so the timing indicators are pointing on the outside, don't have it reversed. There's a boss on the other side. Um, slide it on, make sure it's nice and clean. Spray a little WD-40 on the crank there just to give you a little bit of uh, help when you push it on. You can see out here, look, you can see those timing marks. See the timing marks right there? So make sure your timing marks are pointing out. Now there's a few ways you could do this, but you want to do it gently. You could take a big socket, put a big socket over there and gently tap until you get it all the way back. But what you want to do is you want to go in the back and support the crankshaft from the back. That way you're not pushing the crankshaft back as you do this. You want to make sure the crankshaft is all the way forward. And gently tap it on. Tap it on until it's all the way towards the back. When I say support the crank from back, I mean put something behind. See I got this big piece of metal in here that's just a piece of steel and a shim. And I got it in there against the crankshaft so it doesn't move backwards. So now when I come over here and I'll do this from the side. You can see as I gently put my socket on here and tap, the gear will start to go on all the way. And you'll feel it. Hear that sound change? It's on there all the way when the sound changes and you can't move it anymore. And after I finish, I check, make sure the engine still turns nice and smooth. Now with the gear on and the crank pushed all the way forward, I can check my 
thrust clearance, it's supposed to be three to six, start with two. Okay. Got two. Got three. And just about four. Check with five. Mm, five is tight. I don't think we're going to get six out of this. And six won't go in. So thrust clearance is five thousandths. All right, now I'm ready to slide the cam in. And I start with piston number one at top dead center. And it's pretty easy to tell when you're not top dead center here because the timing marks on the front gear are pointing straight up. Both of them are right at 12 o'clock. So I have piston number one at top dead center. It's really hard to screw that up. You have to be off pretty far. But I have my bearings all lubed all the way through. And since I'm reusing the cam, I did put some assembly lube on all the lobes to make sure that there's lube on these lobes when it goes for startup. So if you're very careful and you rest your cam and you're careful not to drag it on each bearing, you can slide this right in straight. Very carefully. Like that. And there's the cam installed. Just like that. Okay, since I'm reusing the camshaft and I'm reusing the the same uh, spacer that was on there when it was uh, came from the factory, I don't have to reset the the end play of the crankshaft, or I'm sorry, the camshaft. So I'm going to put my cam retaining plate on there and these grooves face out towards the timing gear. So I'm just going to position this over the cam and I'm going to turn these in, these screws, but I'm going to leave these screws a little loose. Let's get it started. And you'll see why later. But I'm just going to leave those a little loose, just so this is a little bit loose and I can move the cam and move it in and out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my cam gear on and if I back up here a little bit the cam gear goes on, you take the, 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 the uh, alignment dot on the cam and you align it with the, the holes on the bottom and this should align with the keyway in the top. So there's a cam tool you put in there you, and it, and it, to press the uh, cam gear onto the camshaft. And then when I'm done, this hole should align with the alignment marks on the um, on the crank gear. Now you put your gear on the camshaft and use a tool to pull it back on. You pull the camshaft on and then you have to make sure you line up the two timing dots on the bottom. You can see the two timing dots, this one's lined up right in the middle. Right like that. And then when you turn the, cr the crank like this, you'll get access to both the bolts in the camshaft thrust plate and you crank those down and torque those down and then when you turn the engine over and you get this timing mark here all the way back to right in the middle just like that you notice that I'll move this over here piston number one is at top dead center and I put two lifters in here you can see which you might not be able to see. Both of the lifters are all the way down, which means I've got my crankshaft lined up correctly with the timing marks. And then the cam for the oil uh, for the fuel pump goes on. When you line up the, the uh, spacer in the back, and if you notice, and I did on the teardown video that when you put the eccentric on for the fuel pump 
The timing marks are aligned. Piston number one is at top dead center. Both of the lifters are all the way down and the eccentric is pointing up towards 12 o'clock. So the timing is all correct with the crankshaft. Okay, just like when I took it apart, the timing marks are aligned. The top gear is in between the, the two marks on the bottom gear for the crank gear. The eccentric for the fuel pump is going up. Piston number one is top dead center. And both of these lifters, number for both these cylinders, are down. Now I left that plate loose. And what I'll do is I'll turn the engine over. And you'll see these holes will line up with those two plate bolts. And if you were checking the end play of your cam, you'd check it. I can feel it which is hard to tell here. It's supposed to be six thousands and it feels like it's about six thousands. Now I measured it six thousands so now I can go in there and tighten those bolts up turn it back around and it should line back up. Okay, tighten those up come back around. I got my dot is right here and piston number one is coming up the top dead center when I get those gears meshed right at top dead center lifters lined up so now the entire valve train is timed. The timing gear is timed with the crank, the pistons, and we're in good shape. All right, so I know that was a short video, just putting in the camshaft, putting on the cam retaining plate, checking the front, uh, the end plate for the cam, which is really all already set, and putting on the gear uh, and the eccentric for the oil pump. I know it's short, but before I put the front cover on, timing cover, before I put the oil pan on, I want to put the heads on, I want to put the lifters in, and I want to put the rest of the valve train on top, the rocker arms, and I want to turn the engine over by hand, make sure there's no interference with the valves, and the timing is correct at top dead center, because there's always a chance that you have your timing of your camshaft 180 degrees off. And before you, you want to find that before you put it all together, before you put the front cover on, then you got to take it all apart. So it's easy to do it this way. So that's what we'll do next. Next we'll do the uh, heads, valve train, and lifters, push rods, etc., rocker arms. And uh, we'll check for interference. Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.